Hi everybody, my name is Rob Power and I'm an assistant professor of education here with the School of Education and Health at Cape Breton University. I teach a couple of courses in the uh, Diploma of uh, Educational Technology and the Masters of Education in uh, Educational Technology program where uh, we ask students to develop a proposal for a data driven or a data analysis research project that they could potentially undertake. One of the questions that I frequently get and one of the topics that we look at at the beginning of the course is what exactly is data driven research and what sets it apart from um, from experimental research. Uh, we ask our students to do uh, this proposal and I frequently get a lot of ideas from students in the first week or so of the course about potential topics that uh, actually border on potential experimental research designs, which is something that we're trying to avoid in this course. We want to look at data that we already have access to and uh, analyze that data in some way that we could use the results to make some decisions about what we do in our classroom or a policy that we have uh, at any level of the education system. So an experimental research design is definitely something that we want to avoid in this case. We want to look at data sources that already exist. So some ideas that I uh, that I frequently see are things like, um, oh, I want to introduce a new unit of study that we've never done before to see if uh, studying that has an impact on engagement or achievement. Or perhaps I want to introduce a new application like a virtual simulation lab to see what impact that has. Or maybe even I want to get students to engage in some kind of physical activity between class, like doing some yoga for a few minutes to see if it increases engagement or increases achievement levels. Those would all constitute experimental research designs, and we need to avoid that for our purposes in this course. So a little bit of a decision tree here. Do I need to uh, introduce some kind of intervention, something that has not been done before and that we're not planning on already doing, to see what uh, data that I can collect on the impact that it has? If so, that's an experimental research design. Um, on the other hand, perhaps we're already teaching that unit in our class. Uh, we've already started teaching it, and, and in previous years we didn't. Or perhaps we've started using that app this year, or we plan on introducing it already, and we've never used it before. Or maybe this year we've started doing a few minutes of yoga between class, and we've never done that before. In that case, that's not really an experimental intervention because it's something that you're already doing as part of your day-to-day -day classroom activities, and you have access to data now uh, that you can analyze. You have uh, previous data on achievement or engagement levels from previous groups of students without the intervention, and you have some data that you can collect this year that you're already going to be collecting anyway. There are uh, formative and summative assessment data and observations on their engagement levels. So a little bit of a stop or go decision tree that you can use here, an even more simplified model. Do I need to introduce some change that we're not already planning on introducing to collect data and see what impact it has? If so, stop. Don't do that for, uh, for this proposal. That's experimental research. Uh, do I already have access to data because we're going to be doing something anyway? Or does the data already exist in some format and I'm just taking the data and analyzing it as it is without uh, introducing any kind of change? Then by all means, go ahead. That is a non-experimental proposal. That's simply a data analysis proposal and you can go ahead with that. Now, another question that I sometimes get from my students is, uh, what about collecting some new data in the form of surveys that we normally wouldn't do as part of our classroom activities? Well, you can go ahead and uh, use some surveys in your proposal if you're not going to be introducing a new intervention, a new experimental design. You're simply going to be giving your students or other teachers a survey to gather information on uh, their perceptions of the impact of what, uh, what intervention it is that you're looking at that you're already doing anyway then yes, by all means, go ahead. You can use those surveys and that will give you some good qualitative data to help, uh, help you understand the hard data that you're getting from looking at the existing data sources.